team right now with, with uh, you know, kind of losing three out of four and then losing Chase this week. Um, as one of the captains, uh, what kind of a challenge is this uh, for you? Yeah, um, you know, definitely a, a different week than than usual. But, you know, it, our, this team is pretty, uh, you know, the team culture and, and the chemistry that we all have as a group, um, you know, along with the coaches, just, you know, preaching positivity um, and, you know, moving forward from, you know, distractions and, and just kind of keeping our eyes set on UVA, which is the most important thing for us right now um, with only a couple games left. Uh, getting this playoff spot and, and uh, starting our run. But, you know, it starts this weekend, and that's kind of what we've set the tone of practice is, you know, Saturday is the only game that matters right now. Can you uh, just give me an idea of kind of what uh, what you guys' message is, I guess, to some of the younger guys who are, uh, you know, this, this is quite a bit of adversity kind of coming at them. Yeah, um, I mean, the younger guys are great, and they've, you know, this has been a weird year already for them. Um, so they're used to, you know, different th different things being thrown at them. Um, and they're they're just bought into the the culture of the team um, and, you know, what we kind of have going. And, you know, we, we're going to write the ship here and, and things are going to start flipping around. So, you know, they're just excited um, to have another opportunity to, to be a really good team on Saturday. Thanks, Brennan. Next, we'll go to Lindsay and then Andrew. Hi, uh, just to follow up on Mark's question, there are distractions and there are distractions, you know, injuries and lineup changes, you know, you're, you sort of expect, but uh, something like Chase, you know, coming out of the blue, it, does that pose any kind of different challenge? Do you say anything different to the guys? I mean, how do you handle something like that that's just so, so perhaps unforeseen? Yeah, um, I mean, it's definitely different, but, you know, there's this very mature team and, um, you know, handling adversity and and stuff again this year has been a lot different and you know as far as the chase stuff um you know i'll let coach desco kind of harp on that i know he talked about it yesterday um but just us you know we're focused on uva focusing on you know bettering the team uh, that we have right now and we've had a great week of practice so what do you see evolving uh, i know you don't make the lineup but obviously somebody's going to move up there to the first attack maybe somebody from the midfield Take us through how the domino effect of what you see evolving offensively without a guy who's your leading goal scorer. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it's uh, it's weird not having it out there, but then again, there's, you know, we're so deep and we have just have so many skilled guys um, and it's just kind of next man up mentality um, for us. And, and, you know, we don't have time to, you know, think about that type of stuff. We just have to move on and, and get ready for UVA and, and create a game plan um, that we can beat uh, Virginia. Thanks. Andrew? Uh, hey, Brendan. I think if, if I'm remembering correctly, the last time you guys played UVA, um, you had a lot of success in the invert, and you guys as a team had a lot of success in the invert. Um, with, with, you know, the, the absence of Chase and some of the other guys um, offensively, could that invert um, system perhaps play a, a, a big role in the game plan or, you know, you kind of working up top um, behind the cage again? Yeah, I mean, a lot of that depends on matchups, um, you know, what they're, who they're going to put the shorty on, um, you know, where they're sliding from. Um, so, you know, we'll try and throw a lot of different things at them and, and obviously invert's a big part of offense. So, you know, it's, it's kind of just game planning and um, supposed to be raining. So there's, there's just a lot of factors um, that go into it, but, um, you know, hopefully we'll be able to have success from up top behind, um, you know, against their poles and, and their close defense. So, you know, there's just a lot of things that, that we'll, we'll be able to throw at them. And then just, I guess, bigger picture. Is there anything that, that stands out to you as maybe areas Virginia's defense has improved in, you know, throughout the season since you guys last played them in week two and, and scored 20 times against them? Yeah, I think it's uh, just team defense and just time playing together. Um, you know, like most teams just get a little bit more comfortable with each other. Um, that was very early on in the season. So we definitely expect a different UVA team. Um, you know, and I know they're expecting a pretty fired up Syracuse team coming down there after after the loss last week. So uh, we're looking forward to it. I know it should be a very good game. Thank you. Jenna? What has – can you just talk about how it's been to go up against uh, Cole Horan um, in practice since he got his first start um, against North Carolina last week? 
Yeah, I mean, he's a stud. He came in right away. Um, and you can tell that he had he had a lot of experience covering number one players um, and number one attackmen when he was at Furman. So this, the talent, everything was there. And then just kind of working him into the, you know, the scheme and the culture of the defense, uh, he picked it up right away. So, you know, he's very good on ball, very good off ball, just like a very good all-around player. Someone who you definitely, if you get him in a line drill at practice, you're like, cool. So, um, you know, we're lucky that we got him on our team. Trey? Hey, Brendan. So you had three goals um, back in that February matchup against UVA. Um, what's got to be done? I, I, you mentioned a lot of the different conditions this time around, second time you're playing against them, the rain. What has to be done for what has to be done in round two to um, match that and potentially even um, have a better uh, performance against Virginia? Yeah, I think it comes down to just, you know, uh, doing the little things, you know, like connecting the dots on offense, moving the ball, um, you know, drawing slides and moving it. Those are all big things that we harp on. Um, and, you know, hopefully it'll, it'll, you know, add to more goals and more shots on cage, which is uh, ultimately the biggest goal is to just, you know, get shots, get our hands free, get our players in position where we can, where we can shoot and score. Andrew. I was curious, you know, somebody like Griffin Cook, you worked with him a lot in the midfield a couple of years ago, then he went up to attack last year and then fell out of the starting spot when, when Owen came in uh, and now is back in the midfield group. And he seems like somebody who could, you know, perhaps see a lot more run with, with all the absences going forward. I guess, how have you seen Griffin, you know, evolve and like, where have you seen him kind of develop the most this year, you know, coming back to midfield and how has he kind of handled that um, adjustment to, to not having that starting spot anymore? Yeah, Cookie's great, um, and you know he can play up top, he can play behind. Um, we can, he can play on the wing and play D mid. He can pretty much play all the positions. Um, you could ask him to. So that's just part of who he is. He doesn't complain. He just you know puts his head down and, and works for us. So that's just you know a huge compliment to him. Um, and we talked about it. You know that that was tough. Him not starting. Um, you know he took it very well and just you know, wherever coach March put him, he tries to, you know, excel the best he can. And, and he earned a lot of respect for that. And obviously he's done that since he got here. So. What about his skill set? maybe allows him to play, you know, literally anywhere. Like you said, the wings, D midi, like he could kind of slide in anywhere. What is it about, you know, Griffin and his frame or like his skill set that allows him to, to, you know, kind of maneuver around like that in an offense? Yeah. I mean, he's quick. Um, he's tough. And then he has, you know, the IQ, um, uh, playing attack in high school, you know, there's all the reads from up top and behind. So that's why it's, he just, he makes the right plays. Um, he's not going to force it. And, you know, when we need someone to settle it down, he's good. He's, he has a voice. Uh, he's a good leader. So, you know, just having him out on the field, just, uh, it's a pretty much smart move. Thank you. Time for a few more. We'll start with Mark. Brendan, last time you guys played Virginia, you were coming off a pretty uh, a pretty bad loss, and you bounced back and played maybe your best game of the year. I know Coach is hoping that happen that happens again this weekend, but I just wanted to know what what is it about you guys that you're able to keep your confidence um, despite you know everything seeming to be against you right now? Yeah, and I think that starts in the locker room um, and with the culture and the coaches. You know, we don't really panic ever. You know, even when we're down a lot of goals, there's no panic, which I think is a great thing. And it's a testament to the fifth years that came back who, you know, created this culture and, you know, never quitting, um, kind of just taking that chip on our shoulder. Like, you know, if, even if we are written off, we're not writing ourselves off ever. Uh, that doesn't even cross our mind. So, you know, just rebounding. We have already put that loss in our back pocket and have forgotten about it. So we're on to Virginia and, and yeah, we're, we're looking for a bounce back for sure. Yeah, time for another, if anybody's got it. But if not, uh, we'll let Brennan hop off here. Trey, you can uh, take us home. Uh, Brendan, so there was that, uh, there was that player's march um, that occurred on the wellness day yesterday. I was just wondering if anyone on your team attended it and did that change the culture in the locker room, um, potentially, going into this weekend? Yeah, we uh, the captains attended, um, and then Nate McPeak, Dami, and uh, Jonathan Bartamian who are members of uh, SAC, 
um, who I think set the uh, the event up. And yeah, it was good. And Coach Desco was there as well. Um, we marched from sky top down to to uh, the Manly area, and we heard Nate McPeak, which is one of our uh, goalies, speak at the event, and that was really cool for us to hear him. Um, he's such a great speaker. So yeah, it was a very cool event. Uh, glad we were there to support McPeak uh, as he did his speech and and you know the whole event. That's awesome, Brendan. Thanks for taking the time today.